Welcome, my dear students. This is tele and radio tutoring from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland, and this is your Miss Atsinyo Sekose. Today, our class is for class nine, and we are going to continue with our grammar worksheet one, and the topic is a new topic for us, that is subject-verb agreement. You will find it on page 43. Subject-verb agreement, page 43. Now, um, if you remember, in our previous class, we have discussed about parts of speech, pronouns, and determiners, and so on. So here, we are going to also uh, brought in a few more things which we have discussed in the previous class. So I hope you remember that uh, in the previous class, I have mentioned that in grammar, we have two numbers. But don't worry when I say numbers, because we are going to discuss only about two numbers. So in grammar, when we say numbers, we are referring to singular and plural. So to save time, I'll just put it in this way. Singular and plural. So that is uh, what we mean by numbers. I hope you take note of that. Now, the next thing that we need to remember here is that uh, we are going to unlearn something again. So write down, when it comes to verb, when it comes to verb, remember in uh, the lower classes maybe you have learned, in fact, this is the rule still applied. When we add an S to the noun, it becomes plural. Take the example of orange. If we add S, it becomes a plural noun. However, in verb, if we add an S, or by adding an S, it becomes singular. So in this case, we need to remember that by adding S to the verb, it becomes a singular verb. So keeping those things in mind, now let's take a look at subject-verb agreement. In simple term here, it means your subject and your verb should agree. It should be equal in terms of verb. So let's take a look here. Now, subject, supposing your subject and verb here. Supposing your subject is one, or let's say you're talking about only one singular noun, then your verb should also be singular. Now, let's take the example of, uh, let's say our subject here is CC. Now, let's say, let's go with the verb like, and let's say, CC like ice cream. Now, what is wrong with this sentence here? We can tell that this verb is not agreeing with the subject. Why? Because the subject here is one, like I said, and we have learned that in verb, when it comes to verb, by adding S, it becomes singular. So we need an S here. So Sissy likes ice cream. That's how it should go about. Now, in the case of a pronoun, that is, Sissy is a lady, so we would go with she. She likes ice cream, and so on. Even if the case is a he, he likes ice cream. So with uh, the person, now the next thing you need to remember here is person. With person, we are not literally referring to a person here, but we are referring to the pronouns such as I, you, we, he, she, and so on. Even in a subject verb agreement, your person should also agree. So when we say person should agree, we mean that all these pronouns should agree with the subject, uh, with the verb. So um, we'll move on to the next. Example, now in subject and verb agreement, there are lots of exceptions to the rules. Uh, in your grammar worksheet, you may find that these are the rules, this is how you should go about with it, and so on, but you need to remember the exceptions. Exceptions here are uh, specific cases where the rule changes. So let's take the example of the um, Verb do, that is, doesn't. Now, 
this verb, the best form of this verb is do. So in this case, when we say personal, take personal pronoun, we would go with I do my work on time. Supposing this subject is plural, they do, and so on. Now, coming to this example doesn't here, we cannot go with uh, they doesn't, all right? We cannot say they doesn't. Why? Because if we say they doesn't, it becomes singular. Remember that. So, in this case, we would go with they don't, and so on. So, I hope that is clear with you. We'll move on to another example. The next example here is and. Now, we learned that we usually join and for uh, joining sentences, and we also use it to join subjects. So supposing, let's again go with the example CC here. CC and her friends. In this case here, what verb should come in here? CC and her friends, let's say dash laughing. In this case, let's count the subject. We have one subject here, and we have another subject here. And in this case here, one is singular, and the, the other one is plural, friends. Remember when we add S to the noun, it becomes plural. So now we are confused. What uh, the rule says that our verb should agree, but here we have two subjects. One is singular and one is plural. So in these kind of cases, you would go with the subject that is closest to the verb. So the subject that is closest to the verb is her friends. So in this case, our subject is plural. So we would go with a plural verb such as are. So Siti and her friends are laughing and not is. When the situation is reversed, supposing I start the sentence with her friends, supposing the situation is reversed in this manner, in this case here, her friends and Sissy, now we have here uh, a plural subject here, and in this case, a singular subject, that is one. So in this case, we would go with a singular verb. So here, it should be is and not are. So that's another example there. We would move on to another new example. Now, let's uh, go with the next example that is in your text. I hope you look down there. You will find phrases and clauses. Phrases and clauses, we have a new worksheet later on, and we would be discussing that in detail. But for today, you understand it as a group of words that make half sense. All right, a group of words that make half sense. So you can note that down. In cases where we have one of the boys. Now this is a group of words, but it is not making full sense. So this is here is a phrase. Now we are talking about one only here. Even if the subject appears to be plural, boys. One, we are referring to only one. So our verb, should be singular. So one of the boys is heard. Let's see. And not are. The same case goes with the word everyone. Everyone is here. Because we are talking about everyone as a collective noun that is a group of people. Okay? So our verb should be is. Now, let's take another example here with the word neither. Mm. 
Now, what does it mean when we say neither, which means none? So here, even if there is a subject, we are referring to no one in particular. So neither he, neither let's go with neither Achum, nor we voto, let's say, and so on. Now, in this case here, we seem to be having two subjects here, but we are saying that none of them, let's say, broke the glass. None of them broke the glass here. So here, in this case, our verb should take a singular verb. Another exception to the rules are nouns, which are collective nouns, or in fact, which uh, are distinctive in nature, such as civics, mathematics, and so on. Here in this case, now we have an S here, and remember, we learned that by adding S to a noun, it becomes plural. But in this case, it's different because this is the exception to the rule, because we are taking it as only one subject here. So we can say that civics is not my favorite subject, or maybe it is my favorite subject, and so on. Mathematics is my favorite subject, and not R. Um, the same thing goes with the word news. Now, when I say countable and uncountable, we can also refer to, the, to this. We cannot literally count news. And uh, this is just for your information. You would uh, find that N stands for north, E for east, W for west, and S for south. So all this is actually an acronym, all right, for news, informations that for news, informations that we get. So news here is one. So we cannot say news are good, news are bad, the news are not good, and so on. We cannot say that. It should always take a singular verb. So news is good, and so on. Whatever the case may be here, your verb should take, whatever the case may be here, your verb should take a singular verb. Now, let's take a look at another example here. Words or nouns which are in pairs always takes a singular verb. I'll repeat that. Nouns which are found in pairs always takes a singular verb. In this case here, when we say Caesar, it has got pairs. The same case with trousers. Trousers are ref uh, trousers is referring trousers is referring to pants. All right, so it has got pairs, isn't it? So that is also uh, one noun that should take a singular verb. So Caesar's is on the table. Let's say trousers. My trouser is in the drawer. Let's say and so on. The same thing goes with tweezers. Why? Because it is also found in pairs or shears. Shears we usually use, in fact, shears is a bigger scissor which we use to cut uh, plants or for use it for trimming our garden and so on. So all these things, things or nouns which are in pairs should also take a singular verb. Now let's come to another type of verb here, the B verb. This is a best verb without any alteration. We can change this verb into, these are the helping verbs, is, are, was, were, and so on. So we know that the plural of is is are, and the past tense of is, is, was, and this is again plural, where, plural, plural, singular, singular. 
So uh, this is our understanding. Now B verb can also have, in fact, has, have, again has is singular, have plural. So now remember our subject has to agree in terms of number. When we say number, whether it is plural or singular. The next thing we have learned is that it has to agree according to person, whether it is a third person singular, first person singular, and so on. Now, in this case here, if we are able to differentiate between the singular and plural, and whether it is past or present, that will help us guide to get our subject verb agreement better. So, what we are discussing here is the tense, or in this case, past, present, future, and so on. The tense should also agree. Numbers should agree, person should agree, all right? And tense, your tense should agree. So let's take the example of I, supposing the action is already being performed, supposing. So I dash breakfast. So in this case, I cannot go with is or was. In this case here, this is another exception. I had breakfast. So this will tell us about when the action took place. So remember, your number should agree, your persons should agree, and the tense should agree. So in this manner, you can put it in that way. Um, many of us gets, uh, get confused with you. You here, we can, depending on the situation, depending on the context of what you are saying, sometimes it takes a singular verb and sometimes are. So if you are referring to a singular subject, it will take a singular verb. And if you are referring to a plural subject, then it takes a plural verb. Let's take the example of um, if I'm referring to one particular person in your class right now, I would go with a singular verb. But if I am talking to, uh, referring to the whole class as one collective noun, you are in this case, because this is a, uh, pers this is a pronoun that needs that verb, you are, and not you is. So that is, again, another exception to the rules. Now let's take a look at another example, or. The pencil or the pen is in the drawer. So here we have one subject here, the pencil, the other one being the pen, that is another subject. Let's put it as two here. Now remember, in our previous class, we have also learned about definite and indefinite, so or specific or non-specific. So we can tell here that when we use the article, the, and along with the noun here, the pencil, we know that it is only one subject here. But here, we have another one, that is the pen. So one, two, we have two subjects. But in this case here, the pencil or the pen, we are referring to it in a very specific manner, one at a time. So the pencil is in the drawer, that can be one, or the pen is in the drawer, that can be another one. So in this case here, when we are using the word or, it takes a singular verb. It takes a singular verb. Now, in your exercise, you have, you can turn to page 43 and um, look at that exercise one. And this is how you should be going about. Now, fill in the blanks by ticking the correct form of the verb. Here, I need you to mark whether your subject is singular or plural, all right? And that's how you should be going about with it. I saw the postman. I saw the postman. Now, we seem to be having two, um, two subjects here. That is one, I, 
and the other one, the postman too. So I saw the postman dash, you have the options there, walk or walks down the street. Now let's take a look at that. I hear, if we say I walks, now that would be wrong here because this is again another rule to the exception. I hear, why? Because uh, in the earlier part we have learned that your verb by adding s it becomes singular. So it seems to be singular here. But in this case we cannot use for I walks. Why? Because we here is a first person singular. So first person singular. So in this case, just as I have given the example of like, or you can also take the example of love, I walk, it should go in that way. So this is one exception to the rules, and this should not confuse you. This is one of the only exceptions with the pronoun or personal pronoun I. Now let's take the example of another one. You dash, you are, or is. In this case here, we would go with you are, even though here we seem to be having one. So the exception to the rule also applies to I and you. I and you. So if you are um, aware of these exceptions, it would become very easy for you to carry on with your work here. So our answer here should be, I saw the postman walk down the street. Because who is doing the action here? I. You, we always go with the word or the subject that is closest to the verb. So I saw. Saw is the verb here. So our answer should be I saw the policeman walk down the street. And so that's how you can uh, go on with your uh, attempting your answers. Now let's take a look at uh, the next section in your exercise. You'll find it on page 44. Exercise 3, fill in the blanks with the correct choice of the verb in bracket. Let's take a look at the first question here. The doctors dash treating the patients. The doctors, now we have a noun here which is in plural form, so our subject is plural. So what do we do here? It should take a plural verb. So the doctors are treating the patients. That's what our answer should be. So as you go along, you mark your subject, underline it, and then you can write subject or give a short form of this S and find out, think about whether it is plural or singular. And then you, if it is singular, you can mark it again as S or P for plural and so on. So work it out in that way. That will give you clues as to which verb to choose. And uh, we can also try Question number three here, either, either dash come or comes with me or dash stay or stays at home. Now, what about the word either here, which means again, not, none, of, none of them, or in this case, none of the subject, either maybe this one or this one. So here, either you, let's put you here, either you come with me it would be in that manner. Remember we talked about you here. Either you come with me or stay at home and not stays. Why? Because uh, you here is not a third person singular. Let's take the example of a third person singular here. He, he and she always takes an S verb, all right? Or in other words, singular verb. So he loves or we can also say she likes. So this is the again another exception to the rules. Remember these are the only two exceptions to the rules here when it comes to taking a, a verb that is s, adding s, make it singular. Supposing I have changed this into a subject which is we, then we cannot say we loves or we likes we would have to go with plural verbs, so that's why we would say we love, all right, or we like, and so on. Uh, let's take a look at question number 12. 
in order to save time, I will not be writing it on the board. 12, all the actors in the movie had dash come or comes to promote the film. All the actors. Now, the word all may have confused you here, but take a look at the subject, actors, which means plural. So again, our verb should take a plural form. So very quickly, we will try to uh, go over again the rules and exceptions. We will try to uh, revise what we have just discussed. When it comes to subject-verb agreement, all you need to remember is that the, your subject, if it is plural or singular, depending on that you count, depending on the number, your verb should take a either singular or plural verb. Now that's one. Then, again, you need to remember that in, in grammar, and especially to do with verbs, uh, you, by adding s, it becomes singular. You need to remember that. By adding s to the verb, you made the verb, you turned the verb into s. Then the next thing that you need to remember is that your subject and verb should agree according to person. Remember person here is not literally referring to a particular person here. When we say person in grammar, we are talking about the pronoun. So your person should agree, whether it is I, whether it is you, we, and so on. And the fourth point here, your verb, hold on. The fourth point here, your subject and verb should agree according to tense. Should agree according to tense. Now, tense here is, it can be a helping verb or model auxiliaries, all right? Model auxiliaries are those verbs that tells, tells us more about when the action took place. So those verbs, some of the examples are is, are, was, has, have, and so on. Or to, uh, to put it more precise, the be verb. All right? This tells us when the action took place. So if the action took place in the past, it should naturally take a past tense or a past tense verb. If it is in the present, it should naturally take a uh, a verb that is in the present, that denotes present action. So that's how you can go about with it. I hope you note these points down. And if you can remember these points, it would be very easy for you to work out your exercises. Now, um, before I wind up, we, when we work out our exercises without actually knowing why we are using it, we seem to get the correct answers, you know, predict it and get the correct answers. But you need to remember this. Remember, I've talked about functions. Grammar is all about what the word is doing to the sentence. It's all about that. So you need to remember the functions. And if you can remember these points, it would be very easy. In fact, subject-verb agreement would be a piece of cake for you. And on that note, we would be winding up lesson for today. Thank you all very much for joining me.